and we're back for another Gab with Abigail. If you aren't back and this is your first time on my channel, hi, welcome to Gabs with Abigail where we talk about the Bates and Duggars and other D-list fundies. I broke my mic and so I don't want to wait any longer to film content because I just realized that I broke it. So it's real good out here today, but we're going to make it work. So let's get into the video. So as you can see for today, we're just reacting to, um, or um, all of us, we, all of us, whatever, <laughs> reacting to the best and worst, I guess, confessions of September on the Duggar Bates Confessions page. I mention this every month, but after the Josh stuff happened, like a lot of it was that, and I think they've done a good job of like organizing, posting about it, but I kind of didn't really want to like spend a bunch of time talking about that and having to go through all this posts and blah 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 life happened so here we are in the month of november doing september's um confessions and honestly october's are really good so i might do october too let's get into it so first time it's been like publicly posted by Jana that she is now wearing pants i have a video about the Duggar Bates pants watch, kind of discussing how all of the members who wear pants now and who don't. So I'll leave a link or whatever if you want to catch up on who so far is wearing pants. And I think, um, yeah, I am very happy for Jana. Like she's 30, so I'm glad she's getting to desire, decide her own personal convictions as a Christian and they aren't infantilizing her. Um, so I said, the, the, the di there really is a lot of, to the dynamics of the Duggars that I feel like a lot of people I would say a lot of people like I'm not included that we don't understand and don't see and I agree with this though that yes um she looks good girl like yes like yes sis. like Janet been actually serving us looks low-key like yes yeah, she does actually dress better than uh ginger now which I never even like really took into um like thought about like compared them because ginger does have her own little you know unique ginger style which we'll get into but yeah very chic Okay, so getting to Ginger. Ginger's fashion priorities seem to have strayed long fr way from the buy used, save the difference. Which, big facts, because Jordans, and think Jordans are like $400, $300 on resale. I highly doubt she just conveniently got lucky and was able to, um, you know, be in a sneaker line and not get out, you know, get a ticket, whatever, whatever, you know what I mean? So definitely... They're spending bread on these sneakers. But, like, she honestly only wears the one pair, I swear to God. Like, obviously. Um, but, yes. And I wouldn't say... Uh, we can't, And we also saw um, the episode on Counting On where they go to California and Ginger and Jana go shopping and Ginger spends $400 on a blazer. Like Ginger ended up spending $300 on a jacket. Oh, wow. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I've never spent $300 on one clothing item. It must be one nice jacket. <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna wear it every day or you're gonna have it for years to come, then it's probably worth it. Like, insane. Is Ginger ever not wearing those ugly sneakers? Her only personality traits include those hideous shoes and doing whatever her husband is into for the moment. A little harsh, um, but it's true that Ginger doesn't show us her personality. Uh, she got really good at hiding that on television and continues to do that in her online persona. And she's no longer fighting that because that is, at this point, kind of who she is and who she's comfortable with being when it comes to being in the public light. And also, she just might have a very boring personality. She, like, you know, and, and when I say boring, I mean... Just because you might be like have a boring personality doesn't mean, like, you're not a fun person to be around for the people who are your people. Um... Or just genuinely that you're nice and like a fun person, but you might not be like a personality, right? You know, where Carlin, and we'll get into we'll get into Carlin a little bit in this video, but is kind of a personality, you know. She um, and that's why people have such strong, harsh feelings for her, and that's why this kind of um, is because she has so much personality uh, that's distinctly her. Where um, for Ginger, she's on the other end of the spectrum where she has. She doesn't show very much, so there's just so much to leave. There's just so much room to just to comment, right? You don't give us that much. Um, and again, not that she necessarily has to, but I think the purpose of social media to some extent is to be developing these pair. When you're trying to sell people stuff and you have fans and want that kind of thing, is to be selling like yourself basically and developing these 
parasocial relationships with people like how much does how many times does Josie say oh I'm so happy I love this community that we have here or whatever whatever like how people are always like oh thanks for joining my corner of the internet part of that like you know joining my corner of the internet implies that it's something special and distinct and unique to you and I think in Ginger's case she's kind of her parasocial relationships with like her fans and I, like I say fans because I know some people don't like saying they have fans, but we know Ginger and Jeremy, the stars of Counting On, the breakout stars, <clears throat> might say otherwise. But she's kind of, she's just kind of riding the curtails of already having that established relationship from the interest in her family, from having been on 19 Kids and Counting, the already created persona of her being this rebel. And she continues to do things that do break the Duggars, you know, ways that they grew up. Um, did she just not go trick-or-treating full stop but yeah so I think this is like a really harsh thing to say um and doing whatever her husband is doing at the moment like like your husband is interested in something why wouldn't you want to try and be interested in too especially he's like bringing you along to be interested I don't even know what that means um uh, because I feel like what are we really seeing Jeremy be interested in because he likes to go out to eat Everybody and their mama likes to go out to eat. I see it out, likes to eat good food. Like, what else does Jeremy do? Okay, so these two posts really got me thinking. So, think of like, it's interesting that we don't ever think of the boys as also being oppressed. And I get that the reason for that is that in a patriarchal culture, it is the men who have the most power. So how are they being oppressed? But I think when we think about toxic masculinity, and so masculinity in the extremes that I feel like they have, like fundamental patriarchs are engaged in really, and this kind of like the way they were raised, right? It sucks to be born into it. In general, this idea that you kind of don't get a choice in getting to be whoever it is that you want to be. And this idea that that doesn't exist because you are whoever God wants you to be. And it's not what God wants you to be. It's what already God has said that you are from within the Bible. Really just, I don't know. I don't want to think about it as just all women being oppressed when it's also the men being suppressed in a way too. Like I think, I feel like they're oppressed as well. And like we get a lot of testimony from men about how difficult it is to grow up in fundamentalism. And I'll leave some links to different men's testimonies about it so you can kind of get that perspective where like, that's the point of sexism is that it's not that it's just hurting women. It's sexism because it's hurting both. Why we should all be feminists, right? Is, is that point that when we're having inequalities that both sexes do in fact suffer in some way or fashion. And, I, and how like just when we thinking about like this is off the topic of Darwin Bates but like our Dave D'Elis Fundies like that video that Timothy did basically calling like women sluts and like oh it's better to like you know be modest you know basically modest is hottest talk just because he has the power to say it doesn't mean it's unhealthy and toxic that he was raised that way like that it's not sad right that we I like why do we want more sons and men like that in this world you know and I, so I just, on both ends, I feel like it, it sucks, is, is my opinion. On both ends, it sucks. For this particular post, I want to say what I think, Jill, the Duggars, to my, in my opinion, supporting Jessa, supporting Jana, supporting Ginger, the difference between, like, with the Jill situation is that Jill said it's not enough to be setting just my own standards, but that I have no technical, like technically I don't have a responsibility to you. I don't need to do what you say, pretty much, you know what I mean? The difference is that Jana, Jessa, Ginger, and all the Bates girls who wear pants now, not a single one of them have been critical of how their parents raised them. Jill has, that's the difference in my opinion, that's the difference. Jill has actually been vocally critical and not just to, like I, I think that's my thing and like Jill goes to therapy and is honest about going to therapy She'll put her kid in public school. Like, that's a huge, huge, that's a big deal. That's a big deal, like, in, in their world. You know what I mean? Because even just now, look at what's going on with this whole critical race theory crap, right? So it's a really big deal that she put her kid in public school. And that I think the difference is that she, between all this that she said, she's been critical. That I don't love you guys anymore, but this was wrong. This happened to me and that my feelings about it matter. You don't get to tell me what my feelings are about it. You don't get to tell me that my feelings are 
like interpret the Bible for me about how I should feel about it. She's she's entitled to those feelings, and I think that is the difference um, of why. Like that's that's the difference. Um, you're late again. I have a video about the pants. <laughs> like catch up. Yeah, I thought this was so awesome. You go, girl. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Not me, though. I had to stop following Carl and Alyssa Bates because I got tired of them posting all the time everything. They seem so conceited. Well, that's most people on social media who are influencers. They post every day. That's how they make their money. That's how they get their engagement. That's how they keep people engaged is to post every day. People are interested in their lives. And if you aren't, then don't follow them. Period. Or don't look at their videos. Um... Yeah, I feel like Josie is my favorite too. For another video. But I do, I wouldn't say that I feel like she's more real. Um, I don't think Carlin, yeah, I don't want to say she's more real, but I do like that Josie has started to do the whole, um, I'm going to post more with me not wearing makeup. Because she's really, she's one, a very beautiful girl naturally. Like, you don't need makeup. She does her videos without makeup. I'm like, I'm so jealous. Oh my God. I don't want to look good without makeup. Like, she looks great. Um, <laughs> she looks great, but I think it's an interesting opinion. I could see why somebody would say that, though, for sure. Um, but I don't, I don't hate Carlin. Streets, the streets hate Carlin right now. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. One, I feel like Lauren is too conservative for him. She's too. She's still too extremely fundy. Uh, the Bates like their girl, their Christian girls, a little bit watered down. You know, a little bit trainable. <laughs> and yeah and also Trace is dating somebody right now mm, that's the real tea that's the real tea I thought I was the only creep that noticed this and I'm glad you guys are stalkers just like me bro only you guys get to be anonymous I come on to YouTube and tell people about it but whatever tell me you just discovered without a crystal balls page without telling me you just discovered without a crystal balls page. I honestly feel bad for Abby. I mean, she was a nurse before being married and she loved it so much, but in IBLP, women have to stay home and take care of the kids and clean. First of all, how do you know she loved it that much? Like, no offense, working is not fun. Working is not fun. And I feel like the person who wrote this probably isn't like all up IBLP's culty ass to know like, uh, your single years are when you're not married are supposed to be dedicated to service and that's how Abby did hers okay she became a nurse to help take care of her grandmother when her grandmother passed um, or I don't know if it was her grandmother maybe it was like a great grandmother but some kind of relative when they passed she just continued to do that work and then stopped like being a nurse for older people is not easy um, probably isn't that much fun probably doesn't pay that well so being a mother getting married especially when you got married as somebody who's older and might have started to think that you weren't ever going to get married she's probably soaking up and enjoying every little minute of this this is what she's been being indoctrinated with her whole life that this would be the most joyful and fulfilling thing that she could do so she is probably living her best life like i don't uh i think i don't know i wish you would move away from the idea that this is why you know the trad wife's of Instagram think that the way that they do that they can just throw around the oh everybody thinks we're oppressed everybody thinks we're oppressed because we're staying home and we choose this Abby's choosing this and I get if you want to like be like IBLP is telling you it's forced you into this mm, no for all the reasons that I just said I can't imagine someone following me around and saying she just broke a major rule again I feel like the person who confessed this like you're not really up the IBLP cult ass like you don't really know how the extremes of it when we're getting publicly such a, a watered down version of how they were raised, the kind of beliefs that they were indoctrinated into. So it is like when these might seem like little steps, it's a big deal. Like Jill sending her kid to public school is a big deal. That's a Duggar breaking a major rule. Um, and I get it from the perspective of like how they've commented like, oh, they're allowed to decide their own convictions and blah, blah, blah. They can live how they want to. Do you think that if one of the Duggars just suddenly became a Democrat, like that wouldn't be a big deal? These are staunchly conservative, right, extremely right-leaning people. 
You know what I mean? So actually, it does matter. Like just the extremities of which they were raised in when they break mate when they break these rules. Like when it's little stuff like this that is going to lead way to bigger things. Like and that's a part of being in the recovery from a cult is those little things that you change from what you were indoctrinated into. So I do in fact think that yes, we need to say it every time. They're they're breaking a major rule because it's not it is it is like major the ripples that that could have it drives me nuts how carlin does this dumb face and talk through her teeth in this whiny voice when she's excited about something also i can't stand how she holds Leela like a rag doll on her hip i don't know how else you would hold a baby let's start there but okay two like the hate for carlin on this page right now bro i don't even say right now like number one champ is Carlin like they there's just so much slander for her which is interesting since she's the Bates now with the biggest following besides her mother um so it's almost kind of like it's natural to, to get the haters but like it's really a lot it's really a lot and I think I get it these are confessions so people are allowed to say them anonymously this is what you're thinking but oh my god they're just so unkind just so unkind and if you don't like looking at her why are you watching her stuff like it's weird like so the minute like she's doing that and you don't want to watch it anymore so then like turn it off don't watch it like it's getting weird like you don't have to follow like it's weird like you don't like her so don't watch oh it drives me crazy like that's how she talks let her be herself like it's weird like it's weird like it's weird the hate is really weird like and then this whole thing about her damn dog oh my god like it uh, like the like uh, the love you guys have for y'all's dogs like I get it I totally get it I totally get it but to like come and project that basically you need to call puppy CPS like the amount of people saying like oh I can't wait for this dog to get rehomed I know they're going to rehome her blah, blah 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 like why would you say that why would you want that for that dog you don't even live with them you don't know these people like it's really weird like it's really weird like uh, the, just like this it's really really weird and if you as a person don't know what to do why can't you go and get help from somebody like and this idea of people saying like oh uh, it's gonna not know you um it's not gonna take commands from you because you're not the one who trained it and then yet are the same very same people saying oh i can't wait for her to rehome it to a better home so why is that better why would that make more sense So it, it would be better for the dog to get like retrained with a, by a third person. That's going to work out in a situation that's a little bit better just because you don't like Carlin. Like it's very weird. And why I get it, like yes, the aesthetic of a puppy, could that have been part of the motivation for getting it? Yes. But also her child really loves that dog. How come we don't ever see comments about how like cute and bonded she seems to be with that dog? Instead it's comments like these, like, like that kind of stuff that would make it hard to give the dog away. You know what I mean? Like, it's very, very weird. Like, it's very weird. And I get it because the hate train is strong. I admit I'm jealous of how thin Alyssa is after pumping out four kids. I hope she's getting enough to eat, though. Um, yeah, she's, honest to God, um, she's her mother's daughter. So carry children well. Um, and then also, just for herself, she's one of the petite bait girls, right? I think she's probably one of the shortest and smallest. Like, the petite girls are Alyssa... Carlin, Josie, Katie. But the, the four of them for sure are the petite girls of the family. Um, but if we look at mom Bates, like she has a great figure. She had 19 children and did not gain all of the weight that she's gained now until like two years after Jeb was born. Like at some point life got crazy and she just started gaining weight. Like that she maintained such a nice figure after 19 children. So like genetically that, you know, blessed, right? So that's why if you know don't 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 feel bad you know don't feel bad she's a cute girl honestly and i don't want to say this bad but i th she still has on like a little bit of her baby weight but like it's gone to her butt she has such a cute butt like she has really a great shape um and i think she should stay exactly as she is but whatever makes her feel good about her body i definitely think she's getting enough to eat the things that she eats that we see like on her Instagram stories and YouTube. She's one of those people who can eat whatever and they keep their figure. Hate her. <laughs> but I, exactly why. Like, I get being jealous. Like, must be nice. 
I envy Alyssa. She's only 26, has a large house, and has her life put together. I sometimes feel like that too, but not in the sense of like envy or that I think her life is so put together. Because kind of like with all the Bates girls, right? They don't worry for money. I worry for money all the damn time. It's like maybe if I had just been raised in a conservative Christian home, been homeschooled, got married at 18, my life would be in a better place. <laughs> but I, I totally get this feeling. It's a human feeling to like be looking at people. I'm sure she doesn't feel like she has everything together, um, you know, but she is in a good spot from what we can see superficially. Yes, this tea that we don't ever see Erin anymore in any of the, I won't say anymore, but we rarely see her now in the Beat Sisters boutiques, like photos and things like that and posts. And I actually, I can't even say I remember the last time she's posted something about a sale. And it does seem like increasingly she's moving away from the boutique, which understandable. She went through a lot in the last year. I'm sure that might've like changed her priorities and what she feels like how she can best serve God. Erin and is one of the more religious out of her sisters and Tori being her best friend, Tori same thing, you know? So I really think that she's been pouring more of her focus into like, you know, the Christian flashcards she's developed, that page she's just posted. She's posting on YouTube a lot more now. And I think that that's just what she feels like the direction she wants to go in with her family and her life. Um, probably she's maintaining a partnership though or something like that because I'm sure she's invested in the company, their business. I have a, I doubt she's going to step away 100%. We'll see. Okay, I have to talk about this post because I got into this whole back and forth with this girl because I was like, she probably he probably follows Chris Pratt because he's a Trump supporter. And this girl got so up my ass about saying that and said like, oh, looking at your... Instagram, I can see now why you would say that kind of thing. Like, I didn't even say that there was anything bad about that. Like, you, like, imagine the word Trump being that damn divisive. Because I said he's a Trump supporter. That's probably why he followed him. Like, in the scheme of, like, Hollywood and celebrities, it was a whole thing about how Hollywood did, did not support Donald Trump. And Chris Pratt was. Like, it was a whole thing a couple, I want to say maybe one or two summers ago. And so, like... But where I want to admit where I was wrong is like I Googled it to kind of like follow back through the stories and I saw like the tweets that were like saying that he was and the origin stories that he didn't go to some like event that was like pro Democrat or like some kind of like voting rally for Biden, something like that, some kind of fundraiser or something. I'll post like a clip of the story. But and from there, it just like snowballed into this thing of saying he is a Trump supporter, partly because he won't say anything openly about what his politics are. Um, so I think that that's interesting. Uh, there's other reasons. I forget why they said that he is a Trump supporter. But again, even still, like if that's not the case and if that if that was what motivated Jason to follow Chris Pratt, there's really nothing wrong with that. That would have been like me saying like Jason is following um, Candace Owens because she's a conservative. It's true. Like, I don't get it. Like, you know what I mean? And why I would say this? Because what of Chris Pratt's movies do y'all think that Jason has seen? The boy is, like, damn near coming out of the... His, he's still in, his, in the brother's bedroom. So let's, let's, let's start there. I, just kind of, I kind of doubt, like, what movies Chris Pratt has done that would have compelled Jason, who made his Twitter account in 2020 or 2019, go follow Chris Pratt. Like... I guess if he really liked whatever that Marvel or DC, I think it's Marvel, I'm sorry, I do not watch those movies, is and decided to, and he's that big of a stand. Like, I just kind of doubt it. And it, that could be the case. But again, there's really nothing wrong with that. And I think Chris Pratt goes to Hillsong and posts about church. So I just think it's like also that element of Chris Pratt being religious, being a little bit conservative. You know what I mean? Like, um, or seeming that way, like this rumor getting out, and it's not a big deal. Like, it, like you guys are getting weird about this whole like Trump thing, this whole our whole political thing. It's just it's so ridiculously divisive. Like it, it was just such a weird, weird strong reaction. And I, I M O. This, yeah, yeah. Like imagine this has never been her man. Like this is awful. Like they honestly should sue for this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, girl, get your money up, get into that bag. They got a lo a lawyer for Josh. They don't got a lawyer for slander. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, these confessions 
these confessions, these confessions, I really have so much to say about these confessions. The first and foremost being how much it must suck to grow up in the limelight for the reason that your mother had 19 kids because people are now obsessively consumed and feel entitled to your womb and to your uterus. When's the next baby? So-and-so looks pregnant. Are you gonna have 19 kids? Are you gonna have 19 kids? How many kids do you want? How many kids do you want? How many kids do you want? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And I get like, for maybe for them, obviously it's not a big deal, but I think this idea of like kind of being obsessed with this idea of the large family, that this right that we just have because they've invited us in, to writing posts like this about Michael's infertility. You know what I mean? And I think, like, it's just, it's very weird. Oh, this one broke my heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, why it, it sucks to be in this kind of like a fertility cult. You know what I mean? Because when you aren't, and you've been told your whole life, like, this is your destiny, it's gonna be so great, you're gonna love it, it's all you ever want, and then you don't get to have it. Yeah, this was actually really, this was really, really sad. And this one is like, like it's very weird. Like it's very weird. One's, it's very, it's so opposite anything like the base are raised in. Like why would they do that? Like in that sense. But then also like to carry a baby for your sister, like just in general, just like based off their religion, it like, that isn't God's design, that isn't God's plan. Your God's design and plan might be that for you, your womb is barren, um, or that your man shoots blanks. That might, be his, that might be his design, that might be his purpose. But the idea that like it would, it's just normal to just go and ask your sister, hey, could you grow a baby for me? Carlin, who needs those blood shots, right? Josie, who now has high-risk pregnancies all the time due to the ineptitude of her doctor prior. Erin, who has to take those prep, prep, whatever shots, those shots for her, their blood thinning disorder. Tori, who also has to take those shots for their blood thinning disorder. So, like, not to be rude, but, like, it's weird. Like, it's weird that they keep suggesting this. Like, which sister would it be? Which one? Who? 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 And again, just this free range and invitation that we feel like we have to these people's wombs. Like, it's weird. Like, it's weird. Like, yeah, I honestly think it's cute. I think they're really cute together. I loved their their YouTube video. Um, I thought it was so cute and genuine. It's, it's hard for people to be genuine. Katie has a cute personality. Really pretty girl. Like, they were really just so excited. There are like, people in the comments, like, talking trash about it. I think it was a cute, genuine moment that they were excited. Like, let people be in love. Like, I'm tired of this idea of like, oh, it's culty, blah, 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 blah. Like, um, of course she wants a baby. I'm not surprised she's pregnant. Like, so what? That's what she wants. She wants a baby. Let, let people enjoy things. Like, even if you don't necessarily agree with their lifestyle, this is a, the simple joy of like a child, being excited that a child is going to be born. Like, celebrate that this is a child who's going to be born into a family that can afford to take care of it well. And, and parents that love it and a family that loves it. You know what I mean? So... And that wants it, that desires it, you know? So I just, like, let's let, let's let people have those simple pleasures. I get, I get it, like I said, this fertility cult thing. So they've invited us into their uteruses to make these kinds of comments. This, yeah, for sure. I saw this too and I was like, what the hell is the point of this? We're not even, we can't even see the clothes. Like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. It's one thing, yes, you're trying to respect your kid's privacy, but right, you would still go ahead and use them to make money, to make a profit. And also that these clothes were also featured um, by Jessa as well. So like, yes, y'all, baby, y'all got in your bag a little bit. It's like, it's, it's crazy to me. It's crazy. The bag don't stop. Not at the Duggar house. <laughs> okay. So I, this confession, I liked this because um, I just got a comment from somebody in another video about how we should um, be... It's okay. People people shouldn't have to wait until the second trimester to announce or like they don't have to because we should normalize the idea that miscarriages happen and the reality of that. You know what I mean? Why is it a dirty, taboo thing? And I get for people not wanting to share it, but for our own selves, it's true. Why internally are we looking at them 
and saying like, oh, that's crazy, a miscarriage could happen. Like, why would you want that public? But why not? Um, and also, especially because like, why I would say why they these people would announce so early, this is a real like living, breathing, tangible child to them already. This is a real breathing, tangible child to them already. So should that baby be lost, they want to mourn it publicly as well because it's a child that they lost. That is my opinion about why they um, would post it and announce so early. Um, partly, like part of the reason why they don't care to, I should say. Um, you know, hello, these are the pro-life people. But yeah, I really, but that the, the comment that I got like really like, hmm, got me thinking. And that's true because um, why I feel like, you know, to normalize the idea of like normalizing the idea that miscarriages happen is because that they happen a lot more frequently than I think people realize, that any of us realize. Or One of my favorite influencers had a stillbirth and it was the saddest thing because again, you know, these parasocial relationships, she's my favorite influencer. So of course, like I'm excited that she's having this baby. I don't know this girl from heck, but she's excited, I'm excited. Can't wait to see what the baby looks like. And for the baby to like pass away, like in her stomach was so shocking to me because it's perfectly healthy woman, you know, pretty wealthy, um, happy life. Um, and the doctor's just saying like, you know, it's not anything wrong that you did. It just sometimes happens. And <clears throat> her talking about how like, based on all the comments that she got or messages that like of how common it really is and people don't know, my childhood pastor, one of his sons, um, him and his wife, their first child was a stillborn. What it was like to like read the comments on Facebook, like her posting, getting ready to go to the hospital, so excited, families commenting, and then at a certain point to see like that excitement, there's no post of the pictures, um, yada yada, there's people, and then people posting like, oh, in support, because the baby passed. And so just I, this idea of like, how really, how commonly does that happen? We really don't talk about it. Um, it's like this really taboo, sad thing. Um, you know, like when Christy Teigen posted her miscarriage that happened and she said, you know, I don't really care what people think about these photos. I'm going to post them anyways. And the reality is, is that for a lot of women who go through miscarriage and stillbirth, that really is so helpful to them, you know, like, or even like just the, just even somebody who's gone through that and posting about holding their child, even though like, you know, because a lot of people will say, I don't want to because they're, you know, they, it's a dead baby. Um, it's a baby that you that you love. You don't want to look at it. Um, but like having other mothers who have gone through that, giving their testimony um, or their story of why that was a good moment for them is so helpful. So that's why, you know, removing the stigma, nothing to be wrong with announcing early, which I know, again, this confession's not, but it made me think about that because I feel like that was a, kind of like a, a lesson for me, like a, a, something that caught, my, caught me off guard. I, I never really thought about in the way that this person who left me a comment posted it. And I'm saying this person because I can't remember your name off the top of my head so I'm not looking at the comment. I just love this one because I'm a Harry Potter stan. This one was just funny. But all right, that's it. That's the, the So yes, I just wanted to have a quick little chat here, talk about some of the best worst confessions. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, share. See you for the next video. It's like you niggas gotta stop acting weird